G'day everyone, welcome to the Australian Reptile Park and today I'm talking echidnas. Now I'm not sure how long this little girl will sit in my arms for and needless to say they are incredibly spiny. But echidnas are one of the oldest species of mammal on earth and technically uh, what they're called a monotreme and a monotreme is an egg laying mammal. And just think about that. So um, this, whilst different to us, uh, it, it is a warm-blooded mammal, but a female lays an egg. And then she doesn't have a pouch like a kangaroo, but just down in here on her belly is uh, a little fold of skin, and it's like a pseudo pouch. So while she's uh, ready and, and breeding, that little fold of skin will swell. So she lays an egg and she incubates it. So she wraps around it, keeps that egg warm. The egg hatches then into a little pre-developed Echidna, tiny, no eyes, no ears, no spines, just pink. And even then, they're so primitive that the little, and it's called a puggle. Little echidnas are called puggles. The puggle, it doesn't even attach to a teat, like all other mammals do. Mum actually has a really primitive mammary gland. And so the puggle uses this little beak and pushes against the mammary gland and milk excretes through soft pores in the skin. And the puggle drinks it up. It's quite extraordinary. Let's have a bit of a look at the echidna, their face is actually very cute. Can you see that in there? Actually, a really character little animal. You see lo so little of them because of all the spines, but you've got a, a really cute little face and that little beak uh, is really sensitive. So their main diet is uh, things like uh, termites, uh, termite eggs, ant eggs. Um, they've got really strong foreclaws, but inside that mouth, which is at the end of that beak, is a tongue that's 20 centimetres long. Now, if you're lucky later, I, I will try and feed her. Um, I'm not that hopeful that she'll eat, but we'll have a look. So there's a 20 centimetre long tongue. And have a look at these mini bulldozers, these front claws, incredibly powerful. And so they're for really ripping into hard termite mounds. They've got to get into the, the soft part of the termite mound to find the termites and their eggs. So the black back claws are like spades and it's similar to a wombat in that the front paws really break in, get that dirt, and the back claws just push it out of the way. Now they'll do that whether they're feeding um, or, now let's talk about their obvious defenses. There's a, a very logical reason for all these spines. Okay, and they are hard. You know, a lot of animals like the bearded dragon, the lizard, um, looks quite spiky, but in fact, its, its spines are really soft. Not the case with the echidnas. So when the puggle starts to develop, um, at about sort of six months of age, they'll get their spines a little bit earlier. Um, and when these spines come through, they've still got fur, and the fur's just insulation to keep them warm. Um, that's most evident because if this was a Tasmanian echidna, which Tasmania is much colder than the central coast here, you wouldn't see the spines because the fur is so long uh, and they need, to, they need to keep warmer. But essentially, you're talking here one of the oldest lineages of mammals on Earth, and that's monotremes. There's three species. Uh, there's only one other relative in Australia, and that's the platypus, the duck-billed platypus. It too is an egg-laying mammal, a monotreme. Um, you've got the short-billed echidna here, and the next one is the long-beaked echidna. Now there's a few species of long-beaked echidna, but they're all found in uh, Papua New Guinea and West Papua. Um, funnily enough, there is a specimen that was from the Kimberley in northwestern Australia, collected sometime in the 1900s. Um, it's quite hotly debated because the specimen seems to be real and valid and it was collected on a scientific ex expedition. Needless to say, no one's ever been able to back it up, um, but it would seem at some point that connectedness between northern Australia and New Guinea, we used to have long-beaked echidnas in Australia. But now, long-beaked echidnas are isolated to New Guinea, short-beaked in Australia and New Guinea, um, and the duck-billed platypus is only found in Australia. Now, some of the really interesting things with echidnas are, I have hand-reared almost every Australian marsupial you can think of. Um, and critically with them, when you rear them, you need to keep them warm, you need to keep them quiet, um, you need to keep their body temperature up because they're pink and they'd normally get all that uh, insulation and heat from mum in a pouch. But we've got to provide that. Um, a normal joey, let's, let's just say kangaroo, would have five feeds a day, artificial milk feeds, and at some point get it onto solids. But they grow very quickly. Now with echidnas, the body temperature, and remember it's a mammal, monotreme, yes, but just like you and I, warm-blooded. But the thing with echidnas is that its body temperature right now is about 25 degrees. That's really cool, really cool. I mean, if we get down to 33 or so for an extended period, we're dead. So it's 25 degrees. And the thing to note with that is that when you've got a puggle, and I've actually uh, reared a couple of puggles, and 
One of them was found, a beautiful family, but they were doing work to the wall of the dam. They dug up a puggle. Mum's nowhere in sight, so they brought him here to the reptile park. His name was Eddie, and I raised him. But you try keeping something at 25 degrees. It's not easy, and every part of you wants to keep it hot like a normal joey. But 25 degrees or you'll kill them. And, would you believe it, I had to feed him once every five days. Can you, can you even conceive that for a mammal, a monotreme? So once every five days, and he would drink you know, nearly half his body weight. And from that one feed, before it got another five days when I'd feed again, he put on like 20% of his body weight. It was just extraordinary. So you're talking about something that echidnas used to roam the Gondwanian forests, you know, and that's when Australia was a giant landmass with Asia and Papua and all of those places. And at that point, it was a real temperate place. And temperate meaning that it was much cooler. Um, even the arid interior of Australia was heavily forested. Uh, and echidnas and platypus and those real old world mammals were what frequented all those forests. Now, come over here and have a look. Remember I said that uh, they've got a tongue that's 20 centimetres long, and it's, it's, it's very sticky. So when they stick that tongue out into a termite's nest, um, the tongue goes in and it comes out with termites stuck all over it. So we actually just mimic that with the way that we feed. So this is a, a really high protein um, supplement diet uh, for echidnas specifically, and it's in a nice clean little base here, and the lid goes on. And so the concept is that the echidnas come up, they put their nose in, and essentially it's just like them feeding naturally. Um, and we'll have a look at that and see what she'll do. So they go down, and we move them around each day, we put them in different places. We've got another big female in here. Look at that. So do we want to have a few questions? Yeah, uh, people want to know, does it hurt when you touch their spines? Does it hurt when I touch the spines? Yes. Um, it's not easy to hold an echidna. Um, this little girl is very gentle and she's very calm. So the thing is, it's like a bed of nails. So each of these spines too are dipped with a little bit of bacteria on the end. So if they pierce your hand, um, you actually end up with a really big welt that's quite uncomfortable. But it's like a bed of nails. So i show you, for example, uh, one of these spines would punch straight into my hand. But if I hold her like this, it's okay, for a minute anyway. But yes, they hurt. What do the eggs look, look like when they hatch? Yeah. Not hatch, but when yeah, they... Yep, yeah. so when an echidna lays its eggs, um, what they do is, um, the egg is actually um, really small, about the size of a marble. Uh, and it's white and it's soft shelled. So it's, it's quite a leathery egg, which is really similar to a reptile egg like a python. Um, but they're very, very small, about the size of a marble. And when the little puggle hatches, um, again, it's only... You know, you're talking so small, uh, really small, pink, undeveloped. I'll just pop her down and see if she wants to have, just see. And you'll see the behaviors here as well. Why do you think they have spines? Um, it's to defend against predators. And so if I touch here, look, that side goes down. If I touch over here, mm -hmm. that side goes down. If I touch at the back, every part of the body has spines to protect itself. And their predators are things like uh, eagles, and birds of prey, Tasmanian devils, uh, tiger quolls, dingoes, goannas, but really they just can't get a mouthful of echidna because that's exactly what they do there. How long do they live for? Yeah, echidnas are quite long lived. Um, you know, they're a very slow growing species. They've got a very low body temperature. Um, so you can get echidnas up past 20 years old. Um, I don't know what the oldest recorded echidna mm -hmm. is, but I certainly know that I've worked with mm -hmm. some that have been uh, 15 years plus. Um, are echidnas related to porcupines or hedgehogs? Good question. So are echidnas related to other things that look like them? The short answer is no. Um, as I said before, in the monotreme family, there are only three species, long-beaked echidna, short-beaked echidna, and platypus. Now you've got things like porcupines and hedgehogs, and they look really similar. Um, and, and, and realistically, they've evolved to do the same things. They all have spikes to fend off predators and protect themselves. But if you go back, through all of history. You're talking in the mammalian line, echidnas came off that so long ago. And monotremes are a really primitive, I mean an egg laying mammal. Um, hedgehogs and porcupines are placental mammals, same as humans. That means they give birth to live young, placental mammals. Monotreme, egg laying mammal, marsupial, gives birth to a young that develops in the pouch. Um, but So they look similar. A, a good example, and it's um, convergent evolution at best, is that we have a species of python in northern Australia. It's called a green tree python. And it looks 
almost identical to a green tree boa found in South America. But the boa is a, a live a bearer, so it gives birth to live young. And the, the chondral green tree python um, lays eggs. But the snakes look exactly the same. But one's in South America and one's in Australia. They haven't met through a common ancestor for mil tens of millions of years. Um, and that's called convergent evolution. So you end up with an echidna that looks similar to a porcupine or a, a, you know, a hedgehog. Um, and in fact, their ancestors, common ancestor is a, a really long time ago. How many babies can they have a year? Uh, how many babies can echidnas have a year? Um, the short answer is they breed once uh, each year on average, in some parts of Australia because they range throughout the whole of Australia. And, and they're a little uh, hero because Australia has the worst mammal extinction rate on earth. And we've lost so many of our small mammals in the critical weight range. And it's surprising that two, the platypus and echidna that have been on earth for so long, and most species like that, they don't like change. They can't handle change, habitat destruction or urban sprawl or feral pests. Um, but echidnas are doing quite well. And so throughout Australia, um, in some areas, they'll breed dependent on rainfall. Um, in other areas where it's stable, like the East Coast, um, they'll breed through winter and their puggles will emerge in spring. It's not unheard of to have twins, um, but normally they have one puggle. All right, one last question. Do they have any teeth? Yeah, do, do echidnas have any teeth? No. Um, what they have is a, that real long sticky tongue um, and once it's in their mouth they've got some just tiny little, I, I'm not, not, not sure that you'd actually call them teeth, but no they don't have um, uh, a mouth full of sharp little teeth to crush up their, uh, their termites. So typically their food is really soft and palatable. Now I just want to show you one more thing before we go. Now each week I get lots of letters from little kids. I just picked this one because it's uh, it's quite funny. Now, this is from Ali. Thank you, Ali, for sending me a lovely letter. She's drawn some echidnas. I can see here a baby echidna and a long tongue, very detailed, well done. Here's mum, here's dad. And what does that word say there? F-A-R-T. <laughs> what, is, what are you doing there, Ali? But I do get lots and lots of letters. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, thank you, Ali, for sending me that little letter about what your mum and dad obviously do. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks, Jim. See you later.